QRD is Progressive Black Talk Media. Uh, welcome back to the Thursday edition of Reality Check here on WURD. 96.1 FM, 900 AM in Philadelphia proper, but of course throughout the nation, throughout the world. We are broadcasting live at wordradio.com. Also, you're watching us on Word TV at facebook.com slash forward, and you're carrying us around on your Word app. I'm at Ellison Report on twitter.com, hashtag reality check. Uh, joining us now, uh, as we're continuing that conversation, of course, about the vote, the importance of the vote, and especially about the black vote, particularly as we're in this crisis over voting rights, Terrence Woodbury joins us. Uh, he is the founder and president of Hit Strategies, a uh, political strategy polling firm uh, based in D.C. Go to HitStrat, H-I-T, Strat, dot com. Also, you should check out their Black Track poll. We've been watching it. Um, I think a couple of times we've mentioned it here on this program, hitstrat.com slash black track. So we finally got Terrence wanted to join us uh, to talk more about that poll uh, and uh, also about the importance of the black electorate and the black vote. Terrence, how are you doing? Good to see you. I'm great, Charles. Thank you so much for having me on. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and thanks for this work. Talk about the black track poll, uh, you know, what, what it is, how frequent you release it, uh, how many black voters you're capturing, what you're seeing. Absolutely. So, so Hit Strategies is a full-service public opinion firm. We are very, very uh, specific to not call ourselves a polling firm, Charles, because polling okay. is just one way of collecting uh, mm -hmm. public opinion. And sometimes it's not even the best way to reach some of the voters that are, that are, that, that are the, the, uh, the most underrepresented and, uh, and, and misunderstood. And so we started Black Track to, uh, to keep a pulse on what has become a rapidly evolving uh, um, public opinion amongst black voters. We do uh, a poll of 1,000 black voters every month. We've been doing it since the top of 2020. Um, and, and we're measuring things like their attitude about the direction of the country, about what issues are most important to them, specifically, you know, how they're being impacted by COVID and by other economic factors. And so uh, we keep our polls there and, we're, and, and it, it's, it's valuable because it allows us to see the changes and the trends over time. Yeah, thank you for that distinction, too. I, I think people do miss that. Now, talk a little bit more about that, too, before we get into some of the, the details of uh, some of your latest findings in the Black Track poll. I think the last one, at least that I'm, I'm seeing, is from November. Um, so I'm sure that there's more on the way. Uh, but um, that, that polling public opinion space, yeah. uh, folks trying to capture that data, uh, that that hasn't been too kind. That space hasn't been too kind to black voters. Um, and in fact, um, I've always had conversations or arguments with uh, polling firms, you know, particularly like white run polling firms, right. you know, telling them how like, you know, like how small their black samples seem. I'm sure that that's aggravated you over the years uh, as, a, as a public affairs practitioner. Hence the reason for hit strategies in this black track poll. That's exactly why we started this company. And that's exactly why we conduct this poll. You know, in, in polling, we, the sample size is the number, number of respondents in any given, in any given survey. Mm -hmm. And typically, you know, if there's 500 or even 1,000 respondents in a survey, then, then people of color are reduced to a column. And that mm -hmm. column could be just black people, or even worse, that column could be people of color. Mm -hmm. And so people, are the, people then begin to make strategic decisions and policy decisions about what this one column of people of color says, but we know, Charles, that people of color and even black people are very diverse. And so what, what Black Track allows us to do with a thousand sample of just black voters is to look at black voters by age and by race and mm -hmm. understanding how older black voters are responding differently than younger black voters, how college educated black voters, and even more granular, how HBCU graduates mm. uh, may be responding differently than, than non-college educated black voters. And so that granularity, that specificity that is lost in, in so many, in so many, in so much other research is exactly what we're trying to solve for here. That's so important. Uh, you know, thanks for, for laying that out too. You know, that methodology, uh, it, it, you know, seems so precise and we need that. Um, you know, talk about, uh, you know, some of your latest findings, uh, you know, overall black voters, uh, at least according to your November survey, uh, less satisfied. It doesn't seem like a surprise there. We seem less satisfied with the, the way things are going in the country, the direction the country is headed in. Uh, give us some of the, uh, the top line, uh, you know, takeaways from, you know, and things also, signs that are worrying you as you're watching this Black Track survey. Absolutely. So, uh, so a couple of the factors that we, a couple of the questions that we, that we keep our posts on are direction of the country, Joe Biden's job approval, Democratic job approval, 
we even been we even asked this question: uh, do, do you believe that that politicians or Democrats take your vote for granted? Mm -hmm. And on all of those indicators, we've seen a, a precipitous decline, and in, in a way that that leads to real trouble in 2022. Black voters are the most loyal voters in the Democratic coalition. You know, we are the backbone, the stalwart of the coalition. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, Charles, you know, when we start to look at granularity, specifically older black voters, I often say black seniors are my favorite voters in the electorate. Right. Because I, I know they're going to vote and I know who they're going to vote for. You That's know? Right. <laughs> so That's so right. when we look at, uh, when, you, when you ask what is most concerning, you know, we, we've seen nationally, Joe Biden's job approval has been declining by one or two points nationally um, I, I think as much as, as, as three or four points in the last couple of months here. Well, that is driven primarily by a 10 point decline amongst black voters. You know, we're, mm. we're seeing um, uh, uh, a, pre a precipitous decline amongst, amongst younger black voters that have dropped from 77% approval, I'm sorry, from 71% uh, approval to 44% approval. Mm. A majority of young black voters no longer approving of the job that Joe Biden is doing. But most concerning is amongst those black seniors, where in September of 2021, 88% of black seniors approved of Joe Biden's job performance. To put that in perspective, 88% is nearing Obama level approval. Mm. You know, Barack Obama had 92% approval. Joe Biden had 88% amongst black seniors. Mm. He's now down to 68% amongst black seniors. That's a 20 point, 20 point decline as of December. Wow, wow. So from 88% to now 68%. That, that is, that's, that's, that, yeah, that's very problematic. Because um, once again, just like you said, black seniors are my favorite. That's how I learned about the vote from my grandmother, taking right. me to the, when I was a kid, like right. four or five years old, taking, you know, or, or a little older, taking me to the poll. You know, that's how I learned about how important that was. And like, hey, go ahead and pull that lever. And you would see other older black people voting. You're like, oh, this is really important to them. And then you learn to appreciate that. But to see that, that's very uh, troubling. Um, you know, let me ask you, Terrence, uh, are black voters um, or and even black non-voters too, right? Because we need to talk about black non-voters because there are right. these eligible black non-voters who are out there who could be getting registered or who are already registered who need to Absolutely. vote. Um, are, are, are black people or the black electorate in general, is it is it making a connection between um, like, OK, this very dangerous moment in time that we're living in and these upcoming elections, the need to participate in these 2022 elections, not just the congressional midterms, the Senate races, the gubernatorial state legislative races all across the board, the need to participate in those races to um, to stave off, to push back against these dangerous, sinister forces like the ones that attacked the Capitol on 1-6? Or are, are, are black voters just saying, you know what, we don't care. We just feel like we've, uh, we've, been, we've been sold a bag of wolf tickets here. So it's a little bit of both. I'm glad you brought up January 6th, and I really want to make sure that we, we have some time to come back there. But, but you right. know, one, the other thing that we've been measuring is, is perceptions of power, of yes. political power. And we asked this question, and this is a part of, like, what is unique when you have researchers of color because they're able to, uh, to, to explore these kinds of things. Or we ask black voters, no matter how often you vote, how much power does your vote have to okay. make a difference on the things that matter to you? And that's important because we found the direct correlation. This is probably not surprising. This seems like it's common sense, but data verified and validated that there's a direct correlation between people that feel like their vote has the power to make a difference and people that actually vote directly correlated. The higher, the higher, the more power you think you have, the more likely you are to vote. Mm. And so what we have seen now is, uh, you know, um, in, in, in October of 2020, a month before the election, 82% uh, of black voters said that they had a lot of power to make a difference. That's now dropped to 74%. Mm. Right. And that, that decline in power, right, is, is a result of uh, of feeling like we collectively did something together, of the acute awareness that we delivered, black voters delivered democratic victories in Congress and in the White House. And because of that acute awareness of their impact, they have expectations. Yeah. And that reduction in power is because the things that they expect it to change are not changing fast enough. Yeah. And so we are gonna have to connect the dots here, both between uh, the, the priorities that they have, the issues that are most important, 
And very important here, this is where Democrats got a lot of work to do. They have to connect that to the progress that has already been made. Mm. They're not mm. going to be able to come to them to black voters in 2022 with a promise of what they will do if you yeah. give two more years. You're, they're going to have to demonstrate what they have actually made progress on. And they have made quite a bit of progress, and, but they're going to have to message it better. Right. I, you know, we've been having that conversation on this program with a number of strategists um, and analysts uh, and, you know, who've been saying, you know, like uh, Democrats are going to I'm glad you made that point. Like, for example, uh, they need to, uh, you know, somehow and I don't know how they're going to do this, you know, create some kind of, uh, you know, needs based network of services, you know, as they're mobilizing voters, you know, connect people to things like, OK, the still vast amount of rental assistance dollars that are out there, for example, right. or network mortgage assistance costs. or, you know, or, you know, like, so like one day it's like, hey, okay, we're going to sign you up for the rental assistance you didn't know about that's still on the table. Right, right. And we're also going to, you know, get you registered to vote and also educate you about voting and why we need. I mean, go ahead and, and in that moment, make that direct connection to say, hey, we're the ones that provided these tangibles for you. But what they do is they do the press conference, they announce that's right. that, that this, this wonderful program that they just appropriated dollars for, but there's no follow up. To That's make right. sure that people are connected to those those programs and services. Going to that conversation, because um, you, you wrote a piece, uh, an intriguing piece on Blavity recently about how the January 6th coup, because it was a coup. It was a coup. Um, it, was, it was a failed coup attempt, but there will be others uh, if we don't get this, this uh, correct. But um, it was a repudiation of black political power. Explain. That's exactly right, Josh. You know, I want to I wanna respond to what you said there about, about connecting the dots, because sure. we've been... We've been encouraging Democrats. We met with Democratic leadership and the chairman of the Democratic Party and the chairman of DCCC. And we've been encouraging them to take on what we call click here messaging, mm. right? When we needed black votes in 2020, we sent them to the palms of their hands. We sent them thousands of text messages that said to check your registration status, click here, to request your mail-in ballot, click here, mm -hmm. to find your precinct, click here, to check if your ballot has been received, click here. We have to do the same connection, the same click here to the resources that you just talked about. Mm. To access rental assistance, click here. To access one of the millions of jobs that, have, that has been created by the infrastructure bill, click here. To apply for those jobs, click here. You know, to, to, to find childcare uh, resources in your community, that was just passed by Democrats last week. Click here. Right. We 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 knew how to how to reach them in the palm of their hands when we needed something from them. Now they need something from us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, you, I, I'm, I'm glad you said. I like that. You know, click here messaging. Uh, you know, something we we, we definitely have you on more often. You know, to talk about because we <laughs> we were saying like that's that's like there's a big vast void there. Um, and going on to, and thanks for that follow-up. So, so that, that black political power, yeah. that's what January 6th was all about. Because we, did, we had a big, like, muscular, like, flexing moment in 2020. Um, in fact, you can make the argument, we did make the argument on this program, and, and we um, also in some commentary on our companion magazine, The B Note, where we were saying that it, it literally was like the Electoral College was an HBCU in that moment. Like, you know, it's like that's where black voters really flexed right. um, in those key states, especially when it came down to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Uh, talk about that. But and that's that's really what one six was all about. The people were mad about that. They wanted revenge against that black political power flex. That's exactly right, Josh. You know, I, this is this is a, a reminder that that I, I want to keep on giving America is that January 6th happened the day after black voters in Georgia in a runoff election showed up overwhelmingly to send a black man and a Jewish millennial to Congress. Mm -hmm. Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff were elected on January 5th. In fact, I found out that January 6th was happening while watching Raphael Warnock's victory speech on MSNBC. Hmm. You know, they cut off his victory lap to show the response to that black political power. And so you're absolutely right. That, that, that is exactly what January 6th was. And black voters are acutely aware of that. When we sit in, when we sat in focus groups the next week, it, it took us seven days to stand up focus groups to ask black voters, what do you think about what just happened on January 6th? Mm -hmm. And a week later, they were, it was a couple things that were very explicit. Number one, this was as much, for black voters, January 6th was as much about white supremacy and racism as it was about the outcome of the election.
Mm -hmm. They knew that because of, uh, well, because, you know, insurrectionists showed up with nooses and swastikas. They knew that because of, this was really important, because of the way the police treated the protesters. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the, the disproportionate use of force, or I should say, the absence of absence. use of force. Right. That came up over and over in every focus group. Look at how those police officers treated them and think about how many black people would have been killed if those were Black Lives Matter protesters in the floor on the chamber of the house. That's right. That's right. Well, remember, uh, we, we had like uh, a few instances where Capitol Hill police responded very aggressively. I mean, there was a, 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 a black mother. Remember, I mean, this was several years ago um, who, uh, well, before uh, Trump was elected, who had, uh, you know, was going through some mental issues, um, had her one-year-old child in the back of the car, and she rammed, you know, yep. ran, ran, had driven around the White House and then Secret Service raced after her, and she got to Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill police did not hesitate. Instead of just shooting her tires, they did not hesitate to shoot her and kill her. I mean, they emptied, like, dozens of bullets into her while her kid is in the back seat. That's right. Um, and it was, I think it was another, was a brother, was it last year or year before, who had, um, you know, he was also dealing with some challenges and some trauma, and he he drove his car into the barricade at Capitol Hill. They also, they made sure that, I mean, he did kill a Capitol Police officer in the process, but they made sure to, like, kill him. Capitol Hill Police officers were being killed, um, or were their lives were in danger by thousands, by, like, a mass of white people, of angry, armed white people. They did, these people came out alive. Uh, it's just fascinating, I mean, the, the difference between you know, Capitol Hill police response. That's another conversation, of That's course. Right. Uh, the, real quick, before I let you go, uh, I got you for a couple more minutes, Terrence. Fascinating conversation. We're definitely going to have you back. Uh, the battleground states, the battleground districts, the races that you're going to be looking at where the black vote will be crucial and key in 2022. Uh, so we're paying a lot of attention to Georgia. You know, Raphael okay. Warnock is in a very tough re-election that, 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 that can only be successful with an overwhelming turnout of black voters again. Um, uh, Pennsylvania and Arizona, uh, you know, the, the one thing that makes it hard to identify target states is that they're still drawing maps, you know, <laughs> and this is, this is just a crazy part yeah. of our political system that we have candidates that are currently running in districts that have not been drawn yet. Uh -huh. And so there's, there's a need for an, an overhaul of our entire democratic system, not just to protect voting rights, which is urgent and are being reversed and, 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 and undermined in, in, in almost every state. But we gotta, we gotta overhaul the way that we register voters, the way that we count votes, the electoral college, the way that we draw maps. I mean, it is, it, it is beginning to create a crisis of confidence amongst mm -hmm. voters who look at a system and say, if they can rewrite the rules every year, if they yeah. can redraw the lines, I mean, it's like kids coloring in a coloring book. You yeah, know, right. this doesn't make sense to the average voter. And so we got it. We, we have to. We are in a crisis of confidence in our democracy, and it's going to take some work to restore it. No, it's going to take a whole lot of work. We've been talking to Terrence Woodbury. He is the president, uh, founder of Hit Strategies. Go to hitstrat, H I T strat dot com for more information. Uh, also, check out their Black Track survey um, at hitstrat dot com slash Black Track. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to them regularly. Uh, as those survey results become available. Uh, Terrence joining us here on Reality Check Thursday. Great conversation, Terrence. Really appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much, Charles. I'll come back anytime.